I could be anything you wanted me to be. <laughs> Shh. Shh. <laughs> I'll, I'll be anything. Ah, you'll crack. Welcome to Not So PG. I'm Brooke Lett and my pronouns are she and her. I'm Maddie Mills. My pronouns are he and him. And before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge the custodians of the land on which we record this podcast. And for me, that's the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And for me, that's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right, general catch up. <laughs> <laughs> In our notes, we have these notes that are in front of us and the first thing says general catch-up and um, I thought I'd just start with that. How are you, B? Um, you know what? I'm feeling the love. Yes. Yeah. I'm feeling the vibes, um, the friends vibes, you know? Okay. Getting around my friends, like having the best time. I do a Galentine's every year. Yeah. So we just had our, our, our annual Galentine's, which... Probably, you know, a bit too much fun. Can't share with you now. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's um, we'll save that for down the track, hey? We'll we'll, we'll let those secrets out of the hair at one point. <laughs> but um, I, what do you love about Valentine's Day? I mean, it's obviously like um, you're all about love. You have a book called Big Love. Is it an important anniversary holiday moment for you? Every year, I try to take back Valentine's Day because I think it's such a commercial and, like, capitalist thing Mm -hmm. where they just try to... Because if anyone knows where Valentine's Day came from, it was um, Saint Valentine. So he... It was something to do with about a love story, like a forbidden love story that they couldn't have. And so he used to, like, write letters and it's it's a... Biblical thing, which I won't bore anyone with the details. <laughs> but basically that's where Valentine's. It comes from St. Valentine. Um, and I just think it's like so, it's such an overly commercialised thing and, and people just make so much money off this thing. And I, I love that, you know, we get around it, you know, people buy roses and, and, you know, things for their loved ones every year at this time. But I also, you know, think we should be doing that in our everyday lives. I think, you know, should show people how we love them and how loved they are every day. But I just get around my friends. So we've reclaimed it. So it's never about Valentine's Day. It's Galentine's. Galentine's. Is that because gay or or gals? No, it's about the gals. Gals, yeah. So the gays and the gals. Gays and the gals. And this year we decided to have an Emily and Paris theme. So gays and berets. (gasps) Love it. And it was lit. It was such a good time. And you are obviously head of the Liddy committee. (laughs) And so every year we have, I have my friends around for Galentine's. Last year it was, um, I had Cerulean perform a show for us at the house. And then I just had all my close friends and family friends um, come over to my house and we just had the best time. And it was on a Monday night last year. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday morning. Not a lot of people were that well for work. So I did feel like a really bad influence, but at the same time, that's what about, you know, we we make Valentine's, Galentine's, yeah. and it's about love. And I just love showing, you know, my friends and family that. I love that. I love them. Yeah. Well, I, and I love getting them drunk. <laughs> but you know what um, beret means in um, Camilla Roy? What does beret mean? If you say you did a beret. It means you farted. <laughs> oh. Uh, anyway, enough of the fart humour. Um, I actually, I get around Valentine's Day um, most years, like especially, um, you know, when you have a partner and you and you want to buy them gifts. But I feel like I'm the t- type of guy who will like get to like the day before or the morning of and be like, oh, fuck, I need to go to like the local Coles and get a teddy bear and a rose, <laughs> you know, from those <laughs> from those pop-up little things because you forget to get a present. But then, you know, like, it'll be, like, on my way home from work, I'm like, fuck, it's Valentine's Day. Like, I'm a romantic, but I sort of always do it last minute. It's never, like, a big gift. It's it's always, like, a rose or a bunch of flowers or, like, something that my partner would like. But in saying that, do you get the ick from roses now? Mm. Yeah, hit and miss. I think, like, yeah, I think it's the execution for me. Like, if they... 
like if I like them and they give me a rose and it's just like a thoughtful gift and there's no Bachelor reference, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But if there's a Bachelor reference, I'm like, get the fuck away from me. So if they pull up in a Mustang and give you a rose, um, do you remember when that happened? Yes, (laughs) I do. I would prefer sunflowers. Sunflowers, nice. Sunflowers are actually my favourite flower. So if if you're going to buy flowers... Mm -hmm. Sunflowers. Yep. But you know what? I I am like self-proclaimed as one of the best gift giverers. And for me, if I'm going to buy a gift, there's been a lot of thought and effort into it. It's never a last minute thing for me. And I think for me, like around Valentine's Day, I've never actually had a romantic Valentine's. Oh. Like it's either been, I've been in a breakup stage. Yep. Um, so therefore that's how kind of Galentine's started. Yes. Like I was always about like, you know, for people who are single and just want to celebrate their day and celebrate their friends. That's yep. what it was about. Yep. And, um, but yeah, I've, I don't think I've actually, there was one year where one of my ex-boyfriends bought me a bunch of roses for Valentine's day mm-hmm. and in the card it had like a, uh, an IOU trip to New Zealand and I'm still waiting on that trip. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Do you think you ever get I'm it? I'm still waiting, babe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, what's the worst gift? Well. What, what could you possibly get gifted on Valentine's Day that would just be taking the piss? Um... Look, I, you know what? All gifts to me are special. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> no, but like, in all, in all honesty. You someone, talk that much gunna sometimes. The biggest shit. Yeah. No, look, um, the, the real, the, the truthful answer is, um, if I was to be given, um, either like on Valentine's day, like I'm a grown man. I don't want a teddy bear. You know what I mean? Like. You know how it's like they have those little teddy bears that come with like the box of chocolates and like, I'm a grown man. Like, I'd much rather like... He wants a dildo. Well, you read my mind. You absolutely read my mind. See, I would love a sex touring. One of the Valentine's Day, the same Valentine's Day I got that IOU for New Zealand, got my first little bullet vibrator. (laughs) Handy old trusty thing. (laughs) Only broke on me last year. (gasps) Broke on you. Broke on me. Like oh, it's broke. broken. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, d- Stop charging. No, I, I, I like any gift. Any, any, like really, if anyone was to go out of their way to get me a gift, I'd be really, really happy and thankful that somebody thought of me. Um, so, I mean, you know, my DMs are open if you need my address and you want to send um, gifts to my place for um, Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'm here for it. Do you have a Valentine's? The question is, do you have a Valentine's? This year? Uh, I don't think I will. No, I'm, I doubt it. Um, I could possibly. But um, I don't know. Hmm. That answer was cryptic as fuck. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, look, I don't know. Who knows? We'll figure it out. Okay. Love that for you. <laughs> so talking about love mm-hmm. and talking about Biggest Mob Love, <gasps> my book, biggest mob Big love. love. Big Love, <laughs> yes, yes. Recently, actually, I was in my DMs and I, I wrote a little bit in the uh, part of the book about how I was in quarantine um, post-bachelorette and post-tearing my sister had passed away. And so I had to quarantine in Perth for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And in that time I had a couple of um, cops come to the, to the Airbnb and and check that I was quarantined. This is when COVID was in, you know, peak times and everyone was like, so all the things were so strict. Borders were strict, obviously. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I had a a couple of cops come uh, a few times and one of them, snapped a selfie with me through the gate like I'd realized that I was this year's bachelorette had just been announced etc cetera, etc cetera. we just finished, finished filming um and snapped a photo and so I wrote about this in the book and I said like talking about quarantine and how hard that and how difficult that was to be you know basically grieving and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then this random guy just takes a photo well I was in my dms recently and this guy has sent me that exact pick. Holy shit. <laughs> was it like a was it a friendly pick and were you happy to take it? Oh my gosh. 
So this is That's us. cute. Literally, Jeez. I just like just put clothes on. It looks basically. like you're behind bars, actually. <laughs> I, and that's what it felt like. Like I was locked up. Yeah. And, and the cops like, yeah, yeah, like the Bachelorette, and it was a very weird scenario. And so I, I wrote about it, obviously, in like yeah. my book, and how weird it was to yep. go through a quarantine and this guy not know what I was going through, but yep. thought, oh, well, you're just the bachelorette. Like, need to get a pick. Yeah, and wow. It was a bit of a full circle moment. Anyways, oh, that was God. that was a funny. It's funny cool that idea. he went and read, like, he went and bought and read your book. Like, that that's the greatest part of this is that, like, he's, like, a fan. And you made well, an impression on him that day, obviously. Could you imagine just reading a random book, by the way, mm. and being like, wait, who was <gasps> me? What a great experience. Oh, my gosh. He would have highlighted it and shown his family for sure. For sure. <laughs> well, the fact that he sent it to me and had had sent the chapter circled mm. is a bit, yeah. Cute. Okay. Bless. <laughs> well, I'll see if he's free for a few Valentine's Day. Thank you. At least I'll have someone lock me up. <laughs> Obviously, this year, like, we have some major goals and obviously we're the same person in different bodies and we have a similar goal <laughs> to be acting this year and we're both, like, um, be, we've both been auditioning for, like, a number of roles. Are you... I've been doing this for a little while now. Like, I've been doing the auditions for, like, you know, for mm. years, really. Um, how are you finding, like, auditions and do you find them tough? Like, because most of the time you have to do a self-tape, which is at home filming, you know, um, you know, you get a friend to come over and help you film and it's just like, it is so tough to be able to like create a scene out of nothing except for the words on the page and execute well. Like mm. I've been finding it extremely challenging. What about you? I mean, I'm so green and so new to this. So you're mm -hmm. such, you're so much more experienced in this than I really am. And when I think about any type of self tape that I've ever done, it's only ever been for the TV shows that I've done. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's only, I'm only myself. So yeah. I'm just like basically like selling myself. Yes. Um. <laughs> so the, the difficult part of being like doing, having to do the opposite of that. And like you said, having to set up these scenes and just reading a few words and then mm. having to give it as much personality and as much charisma and, or whatever it is, yeah. you know, as much motion in that time mm -hmm. has really been challenging. Like I landed a role not having to do a self tape, but then I, I actually was so lucky in that, but then they were so interested in me for a lead that I did have to do a self tape. Okay. Yeah. Now I didn't, I didn't get the lead and yep. I'm not mad about it because yep. they did want an international presence and I don't yep. quite have that. And, but doing the self tape, you know, I was really lucky. I had my friends around who really helped me get into that character and really that emotion. And I think it's about how you also the, the clothes you dress in, your makeup, how you do it, you really have to like hone in on that character. And I I find I've never been able to be anything else but mm. myself. Yeah. And I think that is what I'm trying to do this year is really step out of that, like really step into characters per mm -hmm. se and like, you know, I, I I don't know how you do them. I know that well, you're doing them every week at least. Yeah, I, I audition a lot. Like it's, it's my big goal this year to get a, a major acting gig and um, there's something on the horizon that I can't really talk about. But um, there, I basically how it came about was that I got this script. I was reading this, reading for this role. But on the script, I couldn't get much from the, from the language. Like, and so I sort of, and this isn't something that you do. Like this is like not okay normally, but I sort of went, you know, the back door, um, and contacted the writer and was like, I had a conversation with the writer because I wanted to get more information about the character before I sent in the audition. Okay. Anyway, I was like on the phone to the writer. I'm so glad that I spoke to him because it was so different to how I read the character. So it's funny how you perceive a character through the, just the dialogue and like just a couple of scenes, you don't get to see their whole storyline. You're seeing these two scenes. You're like, okay, this is what I think this character's like. I think this is their backstory. And then you talk to the writer and the writer's like complete opposite. I'm like, no wonder why I haven't been fucking getting the roles. 
It's like well, that's, the wrong, yeah, the wrong artistic choices here. But no, I um, I was so happy to be able to like do that. It was a really funny audition, but um, hilarious. It's a it's a comedy, but um, and I didn't think I was a funny person. I really didn't think I was a funny person. But recently, I've been auditioning for a lot of like comedic roles, and you just have to be stupid. Like you just you have, have to, to like allow yeah. yourself to also like be ugly, you know, like it's not about being like beautiful and, you know, this is my Curated favorite angle. And... Yeah. It's like, yeah. nah, you got to like, you got to find the ugliness within a character sometimes. And I think that's like one of the harder things for me, but it's my passion. It's like the thing that I really want to do. So I'm like putting everything into it this year. You are born for something like this. I feel mm. like you were... <laughs> When I met you, I was like, you just, it flows out of you like no tomorrow. But one thing that I, and I, I admire a lot of things about you, but I'm like, I just don't have, because I'm so new to the industry, I don't know if I've got thick skin to deal with that type of rejection of not yeah. getting a job continuously. Like how yes. do you deal with that? Well, the thing is you go into it without expectation. So you obviously like do the best you can and then you send it off and you sort of let it go. As soon as it's sent, and it's like the audition has been submitted, you sort of just release it from your mind because you, 99% of the time you're not getting a callback. And this happens to the top tier actors in our country and around the world. It's like this is a common process. So like dealing with that rejection, you you learn early on that you just need to let it go. Like it's not something that you sort of send off and, and, and cross your fingers and be like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to get it. It's like mm, I'm probably not going to get this. Off it goes. And that happens like – People say that you have to do like a hundred auditions before you even get a callback. Like, and that's, wow. that's the industry. It's sending tape after tape, after tape, after tape. And then one day you'll get a callback and then you won't get the role. And then you send tape, 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 you get a callback and then you get the role. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a big slog, but once you get that one good role and once you're able to prove yourself, I feel like then the ball, it's like a, um, you know, it's a, it's a snowball effect. You sort of ha get a yeah. reputation. Your skills are obviously evident on the screen and people can be like, yeah, he can, he can actually execute. He can do this. And then you get, you know, things written for you. Like some of my friends don't even have to audition anymore. They're just like, yeah, I'm, wow. I get things written, you know. With, with me in mind. They know, they know what they're capable of. Yeah. Capable of. Goals, yeah. babe, goals. <laughs> I mean, I've kind of kind of gone like backwards in that way. Like I I didn't do any type of TV um, work. Like I was working in youth work and doing a lot of like talks and speaking events before The, the Bachelor in 2018. Yeah. And then I just went straight into TV and I thought that I'd feel really uncomfortable but – Mm. like I was really lucky that I just, just, I can't be anything other than myself. So then yeah. I was just, and lucky people love that. Right. Yeah. How would you go? Cause this is my, this is my question as well. Like, because so new to the industry. Right. So I I'm playing a character and this character has probably got some similarities to what I've seen and some experiences that I've been surrounded by, but yeah. it's nothing, something that I haven't personally felt on being an experienced or it, it hasn't been in my life. And it, and it makes me feel uncomfortable in, in some degree where I'm like, Oh my God, I'm being, I having I'm having to be the opposite, but you just have to channel that, right. You really mm -hmm. have to like really dig deep and to really put yourself in that person's shoes and be that character in it on every separate, every level, like what music yeah. they listen to, what they eat, what they yep. wear. Like you really have to, is there any character, right, that you mm. would feel so uncomfortable about playing? Well, yeah, I think um, one of my goals is definitely like not to be stereotyped in the industry and I don't want to be pigeonholed into um, First Nation roles and I don't want to be pigeonholed into gay roles either. Like I'm an actor and I and I should be able to play across the board and that doesn't mean that I will play someone from like a diverse community background. Like no, I'm not like trying to take up any um, space where representation is needed but it's like I just don't want to be like um, pigeonholed. So I think that like if stereotypical roles were going to be like um, sent my way, I'd be like, no, because as soon as you, um, take on a role, which is a stereotype, you can just be that sort of actor. Like you can, you, you, you know, it's Rebel Wilson, for instance, right? She had been obviously known as the, the fat Amy from Pitch Perfect and, um, and the, you know, the, the funny comedy girl. And she's like, 
had a really hard time transitioning to be a serious actor, even though she's at that level where she's like, everyone knows she's a good actor, but she has been pigeonholed and she hasn't been able to get out of that. Like I've seen it firsthand. So it's like, I want to take on roles and characters that are like different all the time. So I don't want to like stick to stick to like being a stereotype or pigeonholed. So what about your acting style? Like I'm, I'm so new to this, right? So, um, you know, I've, that I was on Neighbours and I still was myself. Like I wasn't <laughs> like a, any other character but myself. But even in that, mm. right, they they put me in this really pretty dress and these big designer sunnies and I was like, this is fucking not me. Like I've got so much potential. <laughs> no photos, to- no photos. That's kind of what it felt like. And I loved yep. my neighbour scene because it was such a dream come true. But it was like at the same time I was like, is this how people perceive me? Like to be this like diva and like this person who like, has nothing else to offer like and so I want to break the mold as well like I want to break into and someone that I really love and like really aspire like in the acting world is Margot Robbie because she plays does accents plays so many different varieties of characters in along and she started out in Neighbours yeah and so you never know is there someone that you love in the industry that you aspire to not be like because acting you're not like one person particularly but they have a particular acting style that you like um i i like i mean i look across the board here in australia in terms of first nation actors and there are some young fellas who i really look up to but then there are also like people who have been doing it forever like for me top tier actor in this country deb malman like she is so brilliant at acting. Um, but, you know, you do get to a certain level in this country and then you hit that glass ceiling, but then you look, at, you know, abroad and you look at LA or, you know, um, in the US. I actually think that, um, like, and he, and he might not be seen as, like, the best, one of the best actors um, in terms of his, like, dramatic skills, but I love that he can do it all and that's Hugh Jackman. He does it all. He does stage shows. He does musical theatre, and he's not a great singer. He does. Um, Hugh you Jackman know, was in drama, the Greatest Showman. Action, yeah, but he's like, yeah. and you know what? He worked on his voice so much. Like every single day, he had voice lessons for that role because he's not a great singer. But he got to a point where he could actually execute for that role, and I love that because it's like a challenge, right? Mm. I mean, let's look at just historically, like. Uh, what we were, we were growing up with, right? So, um, High School Musical, mm. Vanessa Hudgens, yep. um, and her voice is so whiny. Zac I'm Efron. not into it. Well, <laughs> at, she started off in a, a musical, and that was her big yeah. break, and that was Zac Efron and her big break. And she then even released an album. Zac Efron moved on to still sing in shows like like The Greatest Showman. Yeah. But he's also Zac Efron's had, had a bit of a contrast in his um acting career as well. Like he mm. was casted only ever really in these like pretty boy like teenager ones and then he went into like um Baywatch and and like these muscle and I I I love him like I have like the biggest woman crush on him um I would choose Mila Kunis over Vanessa Hudgens any day Mm. and (laughs) the more impressive work that I've seen from Mila Kunis recently was in the show Four More Days yes um and she she uh, is a drug addict, yeah. And she has a serious addiction. And yeah. in in my upcoming acting gig, I have a serious addiction, and yep. yeah. And I kind of like channeled that energy, but yep. I was like, these are people, you know, who started like from very different roles mm. that they are now, and it goes to show that if you, yeah, don't pigeonhole yourself. Yep. You can have more longevity. Yeah. And- but there's also a bloody barrier between First Nations actors in this country and Hollywood. You know, there's only there's only really one person who has gone um, international and created massive films, and that's Madeline Madden, who's my age. She's gone off. She's, she was in Dora. She um, is in a new film with Vin Diesel. She just did Amazon's biggest show of all time, um, The Wheel of Time. Like... She's a massive international actor, but she's the first ever Aboriginal person to be able to hit that level and still not a household name. You know what I mean? Like, so I think there is like, there, there's something about bridging that gap that I'm super inspired by. And I'm like, maybe I'm the one, maybe maybe I'm the chosen one. 
<laughs> well, no, I think you absolutely have potential. I mean, like if it's hard I was work. to follow in That's your footsteps and yeah, and like still continue to like do all these like auditions and move into that space, I would be still focusing on the exact same thing. Like I wouldn't yeah. be thinking of pitching, pigeonholing myself into, you know, just being a First Nations actor. Like I would want to be international. I want to be broad and I want to do, I want to do, I want to do accents. Like I yeah. want to be able to like do an accent and, and feel confident in it. Um, so the reason why I brought up Mila Kunis was before is because the first time I really, really loved her was in Friends with Benefits. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, on Hennessy's Hotline last week, there was this intimacy coordinator and they were talking about sex scenes. Now, I love a good sex scene in a movie, but my thought process is mm. always like, are they actually having sex or are they just that fucking good at acting? They're absolutely good at acting. There's no way that they're But how can sex. you be that close? Yeah, the intimacy coordinator, they choreograph the whole thing. So it's like every single movement, where your hand is placed, how how um close how close your body is together, also how firm your body is together. There's always something between the skin mm. and the skin, though. Like in, oh, especially in terms it. of like the the private areas. Um, See, I would thrive. It's common for um, actors to be in these scenes and get um, excited by them as well. So especially male actors, like it's very <laughs> oh, <yeah>. like <laughs> it's very common for like there to be like a, a sex scene, a, like a, a, a massive raunchy sex scene, and then the actors like body reacts to to the sounds or the you know um, or the motion and. They they like some like sometimes you'll hear an actor do an interview and they're like yeah I had to apologize because you know I got hard in this scene or something it's like I mean it's gonna happen it's gonna I just happen think it's natural yeah. and I think you know you both sign a contract that these things happen and mm. this is part of the job but speaking of Margot Robbie she kissed Brad Pitt without it being in the scene it was improvised in Babylon so basically. No way. Her and Brad Pitt had a conversation around their their boundaries as actors in these roles. There was no okay. kiss that was actually put in the script. And what yeah. ended up happening was they had a conversation before they were about to do this scene, this scene as actors. And they said, if we get to a point where you think that that's a good choice, would you be confident and happy and give consent for me to kiss you. And they're like, yep. So they set their boundaries and then they went into the scene. The scene got to that heated um, point where Margot kisses him and they actually kissed and, but didn't tell the director. And so it was like a surprise for the director. Absolutely loved it. And it worked out. And they kept it in and it worked out. See, and that's the thing. Once you commit, you must commit. Yeah. So if there are any jobs, directors, writers out there who need a yes. sex scene, I happily, happily. Yeah, do it. send your auditions our way, babe. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't be able to do it without giggling at the first couple of goes, but then mm. afterwards, I think I would absolutely now, now that, yeah. Love it, love it. I, I um had an intimacy coordinator for my play at, um on Sydney Theatre Company. It's a little bit different, but um yeah, I. We, we had that. Like, it, it's it's common practice these days because back in the day, people really crossed the line and some fucked up shit happened. Mm. Well, yeah, it's all about consent and respecting your, um, you know... Colleague. <laughs> colleagues, yeah. Basically, you're working together to create art and film. So it's part of the arts, babe. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to more acting this year. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I don't know. Pray for me. I'm kind of <laughs> pr me. <laughs> bit bit juvenile when it comes to this stuff. So you know, do I have what it takes? I don't fucking know yet. Yeah, I think you do. You've got it. I mean, I've got a very like unique look. Like I could definitely pull off different things. Um, I get it all the time, and I <laughs> pull be off happy. different things, girl. Yeah, I reckon I could be like <laughs> I could be anything you wanted me to be. <laughs> shh, shh. <laughs> Ah, you're cracked. All right, can we go back to just what we love and what we're loving, I guess, this year? And obviously, mm. like, the theme of this episode is love because the it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> yes. um, okay, so there's a couple of – because obviously we, we're – but our focus this year is about staying single and just doing ourselves. Wait, you know, what? Dating. Is it? 
<laughs> well, mine is is that dating dating myself, being my own boyfriend or girlfriend mm-hmm. or person, and there's a couple of things that I want to do before I jump into a relationship, like a couple of resolutions, right? So, yep. obviously, I said that I want to travel by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to do some career things like acting, yep. get all this stuff, you know, like underway and. I want to, and then I want to buy a house um, for myself. Yes. All of these things. What are some things that you would like to do before your next relationship? I definitely um, want to travel by myself too. So I might see you around the world at some point, but we can't be together because we'll be by ourselves. So we'll just wave and walk past each other. (laughs) Hi, Hi, I'm here by myself. I'm traveling by myself. Got (laughs) away. Um, but no, I, um, I really do want to travel by myself. Um, I'm also, can you say by myself another time, please? By myself, by myself. Um, I no, but I do want to just, um, travel the world by myself. And then, um, also, um, I want to be more, um, invested in my own, uh, my own, like building the foundations of my own world. So like, I want to make sure that like, I'm building strong foundations for um, for a future relationship. If I was to get in a relationship, that all the work that needed to be done once I got out mm-hmm. of my last relationship has been done before I get into a new relationship and it wasn't just swept under the rug. So that's like, I think that there's like a lot of counseling and therapy that needs to be done just to like process stuff and talk about, um, you know, what what is good and healthy boundaries in a relationship, what... Um, what are the personal things that need healing inside of me or, you know, like that need to, um, be worked through. I want to get that stuff done before I can actually like let someone in. And I might have little moments where I'm, you know, um, connecting with people, but I have a pretty strong gate at the moment that is like closed in terms of like allowing emotions. Like I'm happy Mm. for like to hang out and like, have a good time. But for me, I think, you know, the emotional side of things, I'm pretty much, I've got a pretty good, um, a pretty good gauge on it in terms of not allowing myself to, to fall for anyone, because I know that I can do that very easily, especially, um, that's, it's it's just who I am. So I want to get all that stuff done before I, yeah, if I, if I get into a relationship, I want to just make sure that I'm, I'm the best version of myself so that the person can um, connect with that version of me, not the damaged, sad person. You're not damaged. No. You're, you're perfectly fine how we're, you are. We're all but damaged, babe. We love, we love therapy. Damaged and I think therapy, therapy is good. I yeah. think we, I think as First Nations people, we do, we carry a lot of, um, a lot of trauma, a lot yeah. of hurt, a lot of pain, even if we, if, even if it, you know, we're not conscious of it. Sometimes it's just there and then it shows up in different ways. Mm. I think I'm definitely more in my like soft girl era. Like I'm yes. not being as like in my masculine energy. I'm more in my feminine energy this year. And I think that's fucking great because yep. I think that is like what I'm putting out to the world and I'm getting back a lot of like more positive feminine people and yeah. energy. And, um, and I'm so excited because obviously this is a massive year for me to be in that because I yeah. feel like, you know, well, pride, um, you know, we've just had, it's Valentine's day. I'm, yes. You know, it's Galentine's for me. I, I find it, it is a bit hard though. Um, sometimes, you know, my sexuality, I'm, I'm usually, I, I myself, I spoke about this in my book. I'm pansexual because I've always been someone who never really, like, yeah, I can be a bit of a shallow bitch and, and yeah. I have, like, particular... <laughs> I'm like, yeah, black... no, I don't mean that. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I, I like a type and that's my type, you know? Yeah. And so... Yeah. But I'm never, like, n- judgmental of anyone who, however they identify and what they're like. Mm. Um, But, you know, I have a particular type of person that I like to date and, um, you know, I'm not really... I always feel like I don't feel like I always need to like describe where I'm at with my sexuality. I feel like it's definitely a scale. Yeah. And because I had a bisexual season, it's like people feel it 
one, they feel like I'm having to be overtly sexual all the time because I'm bisexual and apparently bisexuals always want to have fucking threesomes, which is not a fucking thing. And I fucking hate how that always happens. Okay. But I'm, you know, it's a a sexuality is such a spectrum. And like at the moment, my spectrum, my my spectrum of like where I'm at in terms if I do want to go on dates, I'm probably sitting more on the D train. I'm yeah. liking more of a masculine energy, and I yes. but and then the girls that I'm getting dating for are super quite masculine as well. Like yeah. they're very like they're athletes or they're they're quite physically fit. Some yeah. are like working really strenuous jobs. So I'm really kind of like I'm in my feminine energy and I'm attracting a more of a masculine energy. Right. But because yeah. And so anyways, I'm finding it really diff- difficult. Do you okay, to question. Do you think it's harder for queer people to date? Oh yeah. Way? Well, okay. for gay men, yes. I find um it actually really difficult. I'm like especially back in the day, like early days in my early 20s, I found it really really difficult to date in terms of um, you know, connecting with um, men, because I felt like it was always like, if nev- nothing ever felt sustainable, it always felt temporary. And it felt like you get to a certain amount of time with someone and then the, the hype of the relationship is over and then you move on. And I think that now that I'm single, um, and I'm sort of like, not that I'm meeting guys and, and dating anyone, but it's, I am seeing like, um, if I meet someone or if I talk to someone, I see that pop straight up. It's like people mm. want to have like a flourishing moment with you and then like let it go. And it's like and no one wants to really put in the hard yards of a relationship of getting to know someone. They just want to sort of fast track all those all those moments. And then as soon as they're bored, they'll just move on. And I don't like that. Like I think that that's like a common thing that happens in the scene. And also like there's a lot of – um I find that like I'm back sort of, I'm back into this wild west world of Sydney gay scene. It literally, no, it feels like it. It feels like everyone is like, um, I don't know. It just feels very like shallow sometimes the queer scene in terms of like dating and attraction, the gay scene, especially. I mean, the lesbian community in, so when I was living in Perth, it was very small. And Mm. so the lesbian community were mostly girls that, or mostly women and and people who played footy. Um, yeah. So, like, it was just way too small for me. Yeah. And living in Melbourne now, I really haven't had the chance to really experience mm-hmm. the gay scene here. Like, yep. I still, like, I just don't really have the time. Like, it's so weird. Like, when I do go out, I'm people usually talk. just like, People yeah. talk. People talk. And having a, a platform and a profile is really difficult as well. Because yes. And then I think, do people just want to get with me because, like. You're broke, yeah. Well, and that, and I sound that so sounds so fucking shallow, but it actually is a thing because I've seen it and my friends see it immediately. Like mm. I could walk into a room and people just like come to you, and I think, oh, they're coming to me because like you know they want to to like they want to get to know one another, and then mm-hmm. they say something and it just it blo- it will take me back, and I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, like. Bad well, energy. you you want to know what something happened? Mm. Something happened with me recently, right? So I met this guy, super lovely guy. Had a boyfriend, right? And um, mm. like we, there was there was nothing going on. It was a platonic relationship, friends. Like had met him out, but we became friends. And we just, you know, um, connected on that level. Like yeah, super hot, super good looking, beautiful guy, but friends. Anyway, he uh um his partner was like to him. He's like. Well, I heard that um that there's con- there's um conversation going around. People are talking. What's going on between you and Maddie Mills? And he was like, um, like apps like that was made up, right? That was so made up to the point because nothing had gone on and nobody knew that we had met and we were friends. So it was mm. like his boyfriend obviously like jealous and probably has like these store craps and we became friends on socials and blah, blah, blah. So he probably just like tried to create a story out of nothing. And that's where I was like, oh my God, this is, yes, this is exactly what the, the gay scene dating world is. It's toxic as fuck. Everyone's jealous of everyone. And it's mm. like people like, a specific part of the scene everyone is like in each other's business so like even if I was to date someone I would be keeping it on the low low like I would be like 
very much the like low, low, low. yeah i'm like no photos the day, low, 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 low. i'm like no photos i don't want conversations i get that i really get that because yes my love life has been exploited all over the i get it i get it like mm. if anyone gets it it's broke yeah um any type of person that i post on my socials i'm immediately fucking them apparently yeah even my best friends i'm fucking them They're, we're together yeah and um, yep. I posted a guy up, oh, the one that I met at the tennis, and mm-hmm. immediately, like, people were like, no, is this a hard launch? Yeah. No, it's just fucking funny, and it's yeah. just my friend. Yes. So, yeah, I'm, like, so sick of it because it's, like, every anyone that you post on socials, people just want to have, like, an opinion. I get that. Everyone mm. just has a, and a right to an opinion. Yeah. But I just, like, I, you know, I get frustrated. So I, I agree. I'm into the point where if I did want to date someone mm-hmm. – if you see me out on a walk with someone, good on you for seeing me out. Yeah. Doesn't mean I'm fucking the person that I'm walking with. Yeah. So get your head together, people. Mm. And I think fucking but use it's, your head. And but it's just annoying, think, right? Because it's, it's like, so annoying. It's so annoying. And I think it's so frustrating because where is the privacy, I guess? Yeah. Where is like the, uh, you know, like, why do you have to just assume? Why do you have to jump to assumption? Yeah. But also like I want to be able to like hang out with this person as a friend, but I'm not able to take them to anything. Like I, I, I have an event coming up this week and in my head I'm like, that person would be great at this event with me. Like we'd to have go, a great yes. time. But I know that there'll be yeah. photos and I know that like people will try and create something out of something and it's like, I don't want that. I don't want that okay. conversation. So I'm already like in my head, which is stupid, being like, you know what? Like, don't want to be seen with you. Like, if if we're gonna, you know, be friends, we're yeah. gonna have to do it behind closed doors, <laughs> which is ridiculous. No, I mean, like, it's it, I don't know. It creates a little bit of I don't know. Have fun with it. it. Creates a little bit of mystery. Like maybe it's it's nice to have it as a secret. I mean. I've well, done it on yeah. all scales. Like I was, I picked someone from the show. We lived in a secret. We had to have a secret relationship for months, and mm-hmm. then we were out, and it it went to shit. So yeah. who knows? You know, like yep. things always change and happen. And I think life's too have short, fun with right? It. Life is too short. Um, actually, talking about the couple that you were talking about before, were yep. they at all open? Were they no. polyamorous? Like they a were. very okay. strict monogamous relationship. And when yeah. I had met, so that's why it was like pretty toxic. Yeah, but also like when you meet someone and they're in a relationship, it's like. You're, the first thing that you think to yourself is like, yep, friends. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, the, well, for me, it's not like, even if you are attracted to them, right? You're like respecting the their relationship is like priority number one. Even if you're like, have an instant connection, you know? I agree. So yeah. even if like, I was to meet a guy and he was in a relationship and I thought, oh, I'm so attracted to this guy. There's great connection. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for it. You know, I would just be like respecting their relationship. But yeah, anyway, I think that, um, I don't know, they, they, there was nothing, nothing happened. Okay. Profile, dating apps, like what, are, you know, where do you want to find a person? Like, cause I naturally would want to find a person in a natural way. Like in a. I'd like to find them through mutual friends, really. Yeah. That would be Amen. much easier if I. Like if I was to date someone, I'd love it for somebody, a close friend of mine to already know them really well and be able to give me insight into who they are instead of trying to sort like of Like an dig. old-fashioned way. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you yeah. go to someone's house for dinner, they've invited a friend, you guys get along, and then it's like, oh, there's a natural connection there. What happened to um, stopping someone also in the street? And is that too creepy now? Well, I know that this happened. This happened to a friend of mine recently. Um, he got stopped in the street and they ended up dating for about a month and then caught it off. Um, he literally stopped him in the street and was like, introduced himself. He was like, Hey, my name's blah, blah, blah. Um, I follow you on Instagram. Um, blah, blah, blah. They had like a full on conversation in the street and then went on a date. He was dating him for like three and a half, four weeks. And then he turned out to be like obsessive. Cause and... this is my thing, right? Cause I obviously yeah. like don't want to give my number out, but like, what if there is a really, really attractive guy that's like stops me in the street? Like, am I just going to stop from giving my number? Because I also think stranger danger, like, hello. Like, I don't know. It's so complex. Like, I feel like I've just lost. Give them a business like, card. 
That's, well, that's what I kind you know. of am at. Like, I've got two separate phones because yeah. I'm like, you know what? It's work phone and personal. Yeah. Yep. And I kind of feel like, should I be at that stage? Like, or like, do I say, oh, because then if I they add me on Instagram or socials per se, yeah. they're going to immediately know, like, you know? And so it's just, I hate to sound like so fucking ungrateful and so entitled or like not entitled because I'm definitely not, but, you know, so... uh what's the word like i just sound like a bit of a fucking Brat. vlog where i'm like oh my god i'm such a big profile like oh my god i can't give my number out because stranger danger and i also can't give my instagram because then they'll know that i'm famous like fuck <laughs> off that's not who i'm trying to say it's literally like sure. dating brooke is like a whole nother different level of complexity it's yeah. very it's it's hard and i want to meet someone in a natural setting I mean, I have met uh, quite a few people in in more natural settings, but it's been Would you go physical. on a blind date though? Like if in terms of a natural yeah, setting, I if would. someone was to hook you up with someone who you, you know, like if a mutual friend went, okay, go on a date with this guy. Yeah. Would you I do would. it? Yeah. Yeah, I would. And I've also, especially in the dating, you know, in this, in this you know, self-reflective year that I'm having so far, I have been reflecting whether I am more of a monogamous person or am I really open to the idea of dating more than one person? Do you know like what I mean? Like a polyamorous? Yeah. Like yeah. I've, I've, um, you know, not been in an open relationship, but I've been seeing someone and they've known that I'm dating other people and yeah. like they're okay with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that wouldn't say that's open because we haven't committed to being together as a couple. Yeah. Um, but I've been in those situations and I feel like that's kind of where I like that freedom. Like that yeah. I have an, I work, we both work in a, an industry where we need that freedom to explore different relationships and not be so like held back. That yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, look, love is all around us. We will yes. find it one day. And you know what? It'll hit us. In the street like a bus. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one Just, day. But look, that's well, all yeah. we have time for today. So thanks for listening to Not So PG. If you love us, leave us a five-star rating and a little review. If you want to tell us something, follow us on social, slide into the DMs. My handle is at It's Maddie Mills. Brooke's handle is at Brooke.Blurton. And you can follow all the Nova Podcast action over at, at Nova Podcast Official. Bye. Bye.